E. That wasn't one of the options. Okay, all right. So, Paul, <laughs> I would say this. <laughs> We, the hosts of this podcast, in order to record a more Philly union, discuss recent union games, examine the latest union news, celebrate and lament the newest player rumors, and increase our US union fanaticism, do record, edit, and distribute this episode of a more Philly union. We are your host. I'm Paul. I'm C. I'm E. And yes, he's awake. He's okay. just been... Uh, it's been a rough week for him. He's uh, mm-hmm. he's been running, burning the candles at both ends. So, uh, as far as housekeeping this week, we are going to keep this this episode short uh, and uh, talk about a couple of things that have happened. But there hasn't been a ton of Philly Union news, and we'll get into what has happened. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely keep going and see what happens. Um, but as far as housekeeping this week. There haven't been any new d- or downloads from any new areas, no mm-hmm. new states or, or countries or such. And so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep watching or keep hoping for, for more downloads. We have had a good number of downloads the last mm-hmm. few weeks, which yeah. we really appreciate. So please, you know, if you get a chance to help us share the uh, share the, the podcast out, please do so. So getting into the recent games, uh, we did talk about the first leg of the Pachuca match uh, last week, which was a 0-0 tie. This Saturday was the uh, the Seattle washout. They they certainly uh-huh. brought the rain with them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> there's the scenes on the field. I mean, we weren't there. Um, thank God. Uh, although, well, one of us was. Yeah, Eric and I weren't. Um, but those scenes <laughs> were something to see. Well, you know the the Seattle Sounders were Nate's West Coast team for a long time. As oh, that's uh, right, you know, right, friends, right. friends of our friends of the family have moved out there and from Philadelphia, and, and I, I don't know if it was the green or the blue or whatever that that caught Nate's attention when he was younger, but they they were his uh, West Coast team, and so when the opportunity to get the tickets was available, we were like, yeah, we'll take those, and. Um, we got down there a little late. We actually had to return a jersey that we had bought earlier. Okay. It's six nil, isn't it? It's six nil. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we're recording this as the Pachuca game is in the yep. fifth minute. <laughs> yeah. I apologize for that moment of silence. <laughs> yeah, I thought Paul froze, and then I realized oh, he did freeze, but not technologically it's quite possible you're you're probably enjoying this podcast maybe more than that game yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless right. you're a pachuca fan back back <laughs> to the seattle game yes yeah. <laughs> we're less bad less bad news in that seattle game than in this pachuca game so we'll talk about pachuca in a minute but uh seattle wa- uh wash out um Nate and i got down there we had to return a union j- or jersey that he had gotten he wanted to get a size up so he had some room to grow and um, so by the time, like, literally, I got to my seat, I sat down, and the referee picked the ball up. And that was the last time it was on the field. Uh, so oh, it was it, it was a little less than the ref picking the ball up and more of it. It, 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 uh, it floated over to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hip waiters. Yeah. We we knew something. We knew it was going to be rough because when we parked in the parking lot, normally they're pretty decent. But both Nate and I, you know, where they put us was basically a small lake, about three inches deep of water or so, and we were both soaked as soon as we stepped out of the car. Um, yeah, it was really coming down fierce. I know just to drive down there was rough. Uh, just you know, everybody was. Being pretty reasonable with the score being, which was good, but uh, yeah, it was definitely a wet, wet day. Uh, so I was worried if they were going to cancel it all, the whole way down, and then we get there, we sit down, and yeah, that was that was the last time the players you know played played any on the field. It was actually kind of funny. Um, they were on the sideline debating over what they were doing, whether they were going to call the game, whether they were going to wait it out, how many boats um, they would need. Sorry. What was that? <laughs> I'm just throwing a lot of bad flood jokes. <laughs> oh, how many arcs they would need? Yeah. How many boats would they need? Right, yeah. right. 
So, but they, the players were like, you know, like they do, they were, they were juggling the ball. It would hit the ground and it would just stop it. Oh, At one point they tried to have a pass along the ground and the ball rolled like three yards and just stopped. It was like glue. It was terrible. There was standing yeah. water on the field. Um, and oh, and so the, the teams, they left, they left the field and they announced a half an hour, 30 minute de- rain delay. Uh, as they were hoping that the because the rain was supposed to lighten up, right? But uh, they weren't sure exactly what the how the fields would handle. Um, so while they were away, the the squeegee squad came out, they got a big round of applause from those of us that were sitting in the stands watching the game or what were there, you know, waiting for the, the rain delay. Uh, and so you know, it was really impressive watching those what six or seven. Uh, groundskeepers trying to do what they could to, to get some of the water off of the off the sensitive parts of the grass grounds, but yeah, it was pretty clear. You know, despite the fact that they did the entire field, it was it it was still in rough shape by the time they got through it. It's so, like Sisyphus trying to roll the rock up the hill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's t- trying to bail the wall, bail the ship out for him very mm-hmm. much. It was mm-hmm. <laughs> some heroes push squeegees. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that he's the they were the heroes we needed i guess at the time but it was still not enough yeah a hero would float by i mean it was a rough week too i mean they played the game but i believe the rsl game they had to pull out the orange ball because it was uh that much snow. snow yeah i mean it was white fe- it was, it looked worse than the the infamous uh usmnt game from game years green. ago in colorado but um yeah so it was it was it was a biblical a weather week um seems like so yeah six minutes five six minutes into the game the referee stops it they all go away they try to wait for it wait it out but it's clear that the field needed needed some time to drain uh so yeah they'll they'll make it up at some point um it'll probably have to be some weekend a week when the when seattle's out on the east coast and both seattle and the union have a free midweek game time I'm guessing there's certainly I can't imagine any Saturdays that they'd be able to make it up, unfortunately. Yeah. Hell or high water. No, high water rained us out. (laughs) Well, Philly's schedule is opening up a little, it seems. So, yeah, that that neatly leads us into the Pachuca (laughs) game, because uh, (laughs) as we talked about, we're now in the 90th minute of this Pachuca game and it is just downright ugly. The union are currently losing six to nothing. Yeah, still six to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, they gave up a penalty kick. Uh, uh, Wagner, I don't know, so, some sort of a... Yeah, it was a bad play by Wagner giving up a penalty kick early in the game. They then gave up two goals that were called back on penalty kicks. And before halftime, Pachuca scored... Oh, thank you, referee. He just there's no stoppage time. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, end it. Yeah. Yeah. So um before before halftime, Pachuca did score a second goal. Uh and and then Union made a couple of line uh, made a lineup ch- a little bit of a lineup change to start the second half, and the wheels just completely fell off the bus here to be four to nothing, four goals in the second half for Pachuca. No sympathy goals, no consolation goals, just complete embarrassment for the union. Six to nothing. That's two just... great advances to the quarterfinals. Now I got to turn this off. This is yeah. just like... yeah. I think it's good for your health. I um, just wonder, like, did the Pachuca field a different team? You know, last week's uh, uh, champions game up here in Philly, and then we faced a different team down there, or was it just? Wouldn't seem like that would. I mean, who knows, right? But it seems like you'd want to get some away goals if you could, right? Yeah. So I, mean, I don't think they yeah, did a true. B team. That's true. Up. Oh, I mean, who knows their injury situation? I honestly have not looked into that. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, uh, Paul and I were chatting a little before uh, we started recording about Mexican um, home field advantage being a as as I've been trying to say, non-trivial thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, 
Yeah, yeah they call it the families. 12th man, but I wonder yeah. if it's more like the 12th, the 13th, 13th, 14th, 14th, 14th. Yeah. 14th player. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's no joke. Um, definitely passionate fans. Um, I mean, lots of countries, but but Mexico is one of them for sure. Yeah, it's it is not to be uh, understated. It, it is, yeah, it's not to be understated. It's not to be underestimated. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, that I, I I don't know Pachuca's roster well enough to know whether or not the players that they put out there against the Union in that first round were their top players, and then they rolled out their better players for the second second round. But it certainly seemed like a different team. Like they they were just cutting through the Union's defense, and that was Glessness and Low at center defense, Wagner out left, yeah. and Harriel out right. So you know with Blake in net. Like that, that that wasn't a that wasn't a slacking group of of defenders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Martinez started a center defense or defensive midfield. Uh, so, and Carranza is back. So we were at full in in at, in theory at mm-hmm. full strength. So, yeah, um, yeah Carranza came yeah. in in the second half. That was interesting too because uh, Curtin wanted to get Carranza on, but he didn't want to take Sullivan off. And he didn't want it. And Bedoya started this game. Oh. Uh, so he took Martinez off, shifted Bedoya to the defensive midfield spot, and put Sullivan out in the right midfield spot of the of the diamond, and then put Carranza up top because it had been Sullivan and Aura to start up top. So mm. little little mm-hmm. something different. Yeah. Little twist, trying something. I mean, eventually he ended up pulling Bedoya and put Bueno on, and he put um, Anderson on for Aura. But it just, yeah. yeah, I don't. It's not even like the Union looked totally terrible, except for the fact that they just stopped playing defense mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Um, yeah. They just couldn't generate any real attacks in this game against Pachuca, and really, to an extent, not even in in the first leg. We talked a little bit about the Pachuca game, and you know, my in my opinion, watching the game, that the Union looked just a half beat slow or a half step mm-hmm. slow. Mm-hmm. The last one or this one? Last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember you saying that. Yeah, and like I said, then I hope that this means that you know, in a couple of weeks, once the Union have a few more games under their belt, a little bit more training, that they'll knock that rust off and get mm-hmm. back to their consistent you know, speedier ways, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's tough. You don't ever want to bow out of a, of a, of a tournament where you're seeming to be playing your better players, but I mean, they just got driven, <laughs> ridden out on the rails and uh, you know, whatever other sports analog or <laughs> analogy you want to throw at it. This was just an embarrassing loss. They were washed out to sea. They were hard and feathered. So it- I think I guess it was the second Saprisa game when it was kind of tight there for a while, and we were saying like, you know, what would you would you have been okay with them going yeah. out? So now they've gone out. Um, are you okay with them going out, or is it more that they went out in a spe- spectacularly bad fashion? Because I think we all said if they had gone out at that Saprisa game, it would have been sad, but we would have been okay with it to a point, right? So, um, is that you, um, kind of sound more down now? Is it just like the, the spectacular failure? It's or? the spectacular failure in particular mm-hmm. that's making yeah. me frustrated. It's like, yeah. I don't mind them going out. That gives them a, that means that they'll be able to concentrate on the season performance. So right. fine. Yeah. But to but. just so woefully perform mm-hmm. against a team that you held scoreless at home. Mm-hmm. And give up five or six in at their their uh, that's and not get any, you know it, it does it, it makes me worry about the defense and it doesn't give me any confidence that there's that they're still able to score. Yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah. That's fair. I mean, we've had ties upon ties upon ties, and then this. Right? This is a so this is a blow up. And yeah. Seattle unknown, but. And I can already foresee, well, hey, you know, the Union just got blown out by Pachuca, who's not a super power in Mexican soccer, although they're a good, good team in Mexican soccer. They're not one of the the, the main ones, I don't think. Um, and, I mean, they just mop the floor with the Union players. So what does that mean for the Union? Are they really 
still among the class of MLS or have they fallen? You know, because it's been a frustration for a lot of fans for the union that there wasn't a whole lot of big signings during mm-hmm. the offseason. There were a couple of, hey, this kid, this one could be good. Can Marcus Anderson turn into something? Is Ty Baribo ever going to get a chance to take the field? Mm-hmm. Uh, is Col- Quinn Sullivan ready to take the next step? Will McGlynn yeah. continue to grow or will he suffer a sophomore slump? You know, there's yeah. a lot of questions around a lot of the players at the union either brought in or kept in. Um, and there were no big additions, no confident, this is a starting player, this is a DP quality player. I mean, we still have Carranza for this season. Mm-hmm. We still have Aura, mm-hmm. who still hasn't completely found his form, although he yeah. does, he, in uneven. his defense, he's doing better this he season. Some he flashes. Is, but um, he's uneven. That's the thing. Yeah, like you said, like he goes in and out. Yeah, and then Gajdok. Gajdok's a pretty good metronome, but he's not lighting the world up like he did two years ago when he was in contention for the MVP of the of the se- of the of the of the league. Yeah, you know. So will will they step up? Will they step up enough? It's it's a lot of questions. You know, we got. I, I I trust that Ernst Tanner has done his homework and that he's putting enough. He's diversifying his bets enough that if some of them hit. It'll get the union to where they need to go. They just haven't hit yet. Yeah. yeah. We're early. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I was going to say, it's... we are still early days. I mean, that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't give us a, uh, you know, a blank check or whatever metaphor fits in this um, thing. But, um, but still, you'd like your team to come out swinging from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Showing more life even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Puts butt, if even if you will. Hey, there you go. Great. Heart. Uh, okay, my turn. Um, determination. No heart. Oh well, yeah, that's the uh, heart replacements. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's I know it's Eric's movie. I don't know if it's one of yours, Paul. But yes, yeah. I, I knew it. That's why I was hitting my chest. That's yeah. what Gene Hackman yeah. did with the. With the <laughs> little, little what, do you, what was it? What do you mean? We need heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna take to get back in this game. I mean that's not a it's not a totally unrelated uh you know, assessment. I mean well I, I've only been getting the updates of the game from you, Paul, but uh yeah. <laughs> as my as I had my hang my head in hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was also just thinking along the lines of like Rocky. It's like, you know, it, 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 what what you know uh, how from Rocky Balboa, you know, you got to keep moving forward. You got to take the hits and you got to keep moving forward. So hopefully this is just a series of hits that are coming yeah. down on the union and then they can find a way to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's rough right now. We're in a, a kind of in a low point point. They haven't given yeah. us a whole lot to get fired up about yet. This yeah. at the start of the season. Yeah. And I, I hope they take this as fire in their bellies rather than, you know, uh, fear and, dispiriting yeah. you know i can't think of a not another <laughs> yeah. a better way to put it but yeah, yeah it would be nice if uh they don't just retreat into their shells as it were. I, I certainly hope blake and bedoya have some choice words for the team yeah. both in yeah. the locker after this game and then moving forward in, in austin um yeah. you know something to, to help fire them up yeah yeah, yeah exactly but they will be able to concentrate. And hey, if Carranza came back and was able to play in this second half of this game, hopefully that means that he's going to be working his way back to full match fitness. And him and Aura, Gajdog, now Anderson's in the rotation up top. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of lot of high pressing top top of the uh, the formation defensive work there. So it could be it, be, it could be real good for the Union. Um, being able to concentrate on just yes. the season. Being able to focus and being able to figure out who we are in MLS, not who we are in MLS today and in CCC tomorrow and then back to MLS next week. I mean, I, I imagine mm-hmm. that there's that's quite a pendulum swing or can be. So I think it'll be nice to maybe, like exactly like you said, just just be able to focus and, and maybe that will help um, them get back. Let's hope. Like you yeah. said, early days though. It feels sure. like in terms of a season strategy, the union are now in the category of that, you know, you got one job. Yeah. That's it. 
there's no there's no uh yeah. champions league anymore or champions cup anymore there's no open cup which is a whole nother thing yeah um yeah. So all you all you have to focus on now is mls you got one job there is no tomorrow that makes yeah. you a very dangerous man <laughs> yeah. keeping with their replacements there there you go yeah um yeah so it will be interesting to see if they if they can use that as as motivation um so going into the Austin game, which would you prefer to see the union's offense get back on track and score a bunch of goals and win like four to two or their defense to get back on track and either draw zero zero or like win one to nothing? Yes. <laughs> well, you can't have both. You got to pick one. Absolutely not on zero zero because I just I can't with zero zero games or shall we say nil nil. Um, I don't know. I I would love to see a four two. It sounds that sounds like fun, doesn't it? It just sounds like fun. I mean, I, I it does not that, not that I want like to not get a clean sheet, but it just you know I would love to see a nice high scoring game like two years ago. That'd be kind of fun. How about Yui? Well. I know it's because I'm, you know, so tired or whatever, but it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know if there's any result on, on this upcoming game that I'm going to be like unabashedly happy about. I mean, I say that mostly joking, but it's kind of like, <laughs> really, what would make me happy? Yeah, we win 3 0. We win 4 0. That would make me happy. If we win, like, yeah. oh, we won 3 2, it's like, man, I'm glad we got those goals, but why are we giving up goals? Or if we, if we win one nil, it's like, all right, it's great. We got, you know, we, we held it to a, uh, you know, scoreless, but it's like, we got to get our scoring machine going better. You know, I want to see a four nil, uh, like victory, but at the same time I get that four nil victory. And I'm automatically going to be thinking like, okay, well that was just a fluke. That was that one off. It doesn't really mean anything, you know? Um, yeah. So I think, I'm, uh, Hey, yeah. E though, E that wasn't one of the options. Okay. All right. So Paul, I would say this. <laughs> If it was, I would take a, I would take a four, two win. I want to okay. see our, our, our scoring back up and right. into my head. Yeah. I, I kind of voice in my ear, you know, <laughs> I understand what you're saying because it's kind of like backsliding to the early seasons where it's like, yeah, you know, know. we're, we're up four nil. Are we going to hold it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I remember like we up like three, nothing. <laughs> like, not. Oh gosh. Three, two. Uh, yeah. We don't lose. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Follow you. No, I, I, I'm I'm of a mind that I'd like to see a one nothing victory. I would like to see them reestablish their defense. I think Jim Curtin, as a defensive player, kind of coaches from the defense forward. He kind of he he kind of sets it as a, as a, a the base layer. Like that, if you can establish your defense is strong, then you can build into the attack. Uh, I think it take, tends to take a little more time for the attack players to gel and know. Who's making which runs where? You know, who can I look off and make a pat and a no look pass into a space for a teammate to run onto? Um, I do think that those tend to happen. Now, I would definitely agree with both of you. I'd much rather just see a four nothing victory for the union, mm -hmm. but I don't think we're going to reestablish both of them. Yeah. So between the two, I think I'd like to see them reestablish the defense as a as a brick yeah. wall. Like, yeah. Right now, we're just giving up too many goals yeah. where we can't like. Yeah, we held Pachuca scoreless, and I think there's been one other shutout, but we also gave up goals in games that ended up being ties that if we had just given up one less goal, we would have won, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it would have been nice. Uh, so I think that if the Union are going to turn it around, it'll be on the defense side first, but I certainly wouldn't complain about a 4-2 victory, but I, it's still, unless you see both of them happening consistently over the next few weeks, then I think we're going to we're going to run into some, some start questioning things a bit. Well, sure. And we, we saw the other option out there and that is the union lose like two nil in Austin. Yep. Um, and then it's just like, all right, now we're just being handed our hat and all in both leagues. Well, and, and let's remember it is a road game and for is. whatever reason we struggle. It is not all the time, but we struggle with road games quite often. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Austin, while they're not doing really well so far this season, they are still Austin. They did still, you know, make really good, you know, runs in the not too distant past in the West. And you know, it's Texas. The, the temperatures are going to be a factor probably for some of these players who have gotten used to the cold of the Northeast there. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see. 
Actually, I'm looking at the uh, and they have McConaughey as the minister of <laughs> MLS culture, whatever that is. I believe the temperatures down there have been pretty nice, varying between the 60s and the 80s. So, and invariably dry. Well, no, Austin's a little damper. Never mind. But still, yeah. this not week Seattle damp. Nice. <laughs> this week around here looks very nice. So hopefully, yeah. uh, you know that that will hold. Um, yeah. And we'll have to see what the union do uh, and, and how they bounce back from this this performance. And, and yeah. uh, I, I hope they find find their game legs because they need mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it would be nice to have a strong showing also for the fans to kind of um, bolster the confidence. You know, a, a four two, or you know, if that's my option as opposed to a four nil. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it would be it. it Yes, they gave up goals. People would notice that and note that. But I, I just, yeah, I kind of feel like um, it might go further than a one nil, which seems like a less convincing win. I mean, you and I, I understand your reasoning, and I think your reasoning is sound. But I'm just saying to the, you know, as we were talking about before, we start recording. Paul, it is sort of like just yep. you know more casual fan. Um, Four two sounds a little more dramatic and mm-hmm. solid in some ways. And I want to know. So I just checked the schedule, and the Union are away the next two weekends. Yeah, they're in Austin, and then they're in Portland before they return home to face Minnesota, who's who's been playing pretty well to start yeah. the season. Um, so, in all honesty, this could go against the Union, and if the, pretty significantly over the next few weeks, if they don't get things righted. Uh, fortunately, they are going to be able to, de- you know, devote themselves and target and con- really concentrate on these con- mm-hmm. a couple of games because uh, there aren't there. I believe they're not right. They're not participating in the Open Cup. Nope. And um, so they're not going to have any distractions. So you got one. Job. See what they do. You got one job. So enough prognosticating, I think, about Austin. We'll see what happens. We certainly are hopeful, but leery, uh, I guess, would be you know the, the best way to describe how we're all feeling after the uh, yeah. Pachuca performance or lack mm-hmm. thereof. Hopeful, but leery. I'm more Philadelphia Union. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more Philly Union, I should say. All right. So, like I said, it was a quiet week this week. Uh, not really any other union news. Hopefully, Carranza will continue to get back to match fitness. Anything else from either of you? No, uh, I think I think that's it. Very I'm sorry, good. Match Eric's energy. I have to match Paul's. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So, as always, you can find us on our website, amorephillyunion.com. Feel free to email us at pod at amorephillyunion.com. You can find us on X at Amore Philly U. You can also find us on Instagram, YouTube, or threads at Amore Philly Union. Please check out our Spotify playlist under Amore Philly Union and give it a tune in, give it a listen. Um, you know, it's definitely, definitely uh, still developing, and, and hopefully you're enjoying uh, what we add from week to week or change from week to week. So please download our podcast wherever you get yours Google, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, etc. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in for another episode of A More Philly Union. We're your host. I'm Paul. I'm C. I'm Sleeky. Go Union! Sleep E. Yeah, I know I should have put more of a space in it. Yeah, you know. Good enough.